Süden hat der Gegner Zossen genommen und stößt auf Starnsdorf vor. Der Feind operiert jetzt am nördlichen Stadtrand zwischen Frohnau und Pankow. Und im Osten ist der Feind bis zur Linie lichtenberg marsdorf karlshorst gelangt. Mit dem Angriff Steiners wird das alles in Ordnung kommen. Mein Führer, Steiner... Steiner konnte nicht genügend Kräfte für einen Angriff massieren. Der Angriff Steiner ist nicht erfolgt. Es bleiben im Raum Keitel, Jodel, Krebs und Butter. Das war ein Befehl! Der Angriff Steiners war ein Befehl! Wer sind Sie? Wie der hat mich verlogen! Jeder hat mich verlogen, sogar die SS! Die gesamte Generalität ist in zwei, drei solchen Haufen niederträchtiger, treuloser Feiglinge! Mein Führer, ich kann nicht zulassen, dass die Soldaten, die für Sie verbringen... Ist das Feiglinge! Verräter, Versager! Mein Führer, was Sie da sagen, ist ungeheuerlich! Die Generalität ist der Geschmeiß des deutschen Volkes! Sie ist ohne Ehre! Sie nennen sich Generale, weil Sie Jahre auf Militärakademien zugebracht haben, nur um zu lernen, wie man Messer und Gabel hält. Jahrelang hat das Militär meine Aktionen nur behindert. Es hat mich jeden Mord mit dem Widerstand in den Weg gelegt. Ich hätte gut daran getan, um darin alle höheren Offiziere rekrutieren zu lassen, wie Stalin. <lacht> All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy, Camel. And I don't have a great deal to say in terms of the markets because we've got to get through FOMC, right? The US CPI came in and it was more or less in line with expectation. So we're still yet to see this inflation start to swing towards deflation. Is that coming in the next print, two, three prints? That's to be determined. For now, though, it's seemingly sticky, but it's not creeping up, right? And at the same time, we're still seeing the commodities come off. Many of them are showing in deflationary looks. Actually, if I point to oil right now, take a look at oil, right? It doesn't really look sticky inflation to me. So many commodity charts look like this, and many of them look a lot worse. Also, gold seems to know that we're not, we're not quite ready to break the all-time high just yet. So I still maintain that the base case is we are still swinging from that highly inflationary towards deflation. But as you know, I'm not really expecting anything, but positive upside bull market behavior until well into Q1 of next year, perhaps even later than that. The big thing is that this is still pricing in, the CME is still pricing in a rate pause at today's FOMC. So we're almost certainly gonna get this. And interestingly enough, if I click out to January's meeting, 92.2%. So this is gonna reprice after foul, foul? <laughs> Powell talks today. But again, this kind of sets us up to see pauses well into January and February of next year. By the time we then get out towards March, this is where we start to price in the rate cuts. This is where I've been speculating that something will possibly break. That bank term funding program where they disguise the QE by loaning it to banks to prop them up after the unrealized losses from the bonds, that is set to end in March. As I keep saying, when we get to March, they could easily kick the can down the road, extend it. But I would think these banks are probably going to suffer. I would think that we're probably gonna have to see some extreme rate cuts occur as a result of something breaking. So it's still the base case, all the while the stock market continues to trend up, then I continue to be bullish. Going into the FOMC today, it's pretty cute that Yellen has already kneecapped Powell on policy before he even speaks. And it begs the question, doesn't it? What else is he possibly gonna say? Can he totally contradict her? Not really. So Yellen seems to be driving this bus, even though the wheels are of course coming off of said bus. And Powell remains just a stage figure at this point with no credibility whatsoever. Not to mention, all this comes after Yellen's agenda for another liquidity backstop has already been announced and is soon coming to a market near you with a treasury buyback plan going to boost market resilience. 
So we've got yet another form of QE in disguise, right? Another form of QE that identifies as something else. And of course, the market is the truth. The chart is the truth. Charts do not lie. The reason the charts look like this is because everything I've said so far seems to be what is in play, right? If what I was saying was not found in reality, then this chart would not be targeting the all-time highs. We would not be a mere few percentage points away. And this is as bullish as a son of a gun, right? This is as bullish as a son of a gun. This cycle low is likely going to form higher up than I have it marked. And the charts only get more bullish when we click through to the NASDAQ and to the Dow Jones, don't they? So take a look at this. In fact, how many points away is this? The Dow Jones, a mere 1%, 380 points. That is one candle. That is half of a large daily candle for the Dow. Okay, half of a large daily candle for the Dow away from all time highs. So it tells you, doesn't it? It tells you that we're on the right side of the market. It tells you that this is going to continue to happen and the max pain trade remains higher. Not to mention, the only thing that's bearish out there at the moment is the VIX chart, okay? <laughs> so with everything that's going on at the moment, with allegedly sticky inflation and blah, 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 look, look at the VIX. No fear in this market, no volatility, soon to be sub 12 in my humble opinion. Over in the world of Bitcoin, we are continuing to climb a wall of worry, okay? We're seeing things like this. People are flexing their shorts on Bitcoin. I do not know why you would short an up-only asset, to be honest. If we take a look at the chart, amongst everything that's going on right now, we're right in that timing window for a cycle low. And look, we still haven't even breached 40K. Now, could we wick it today? Could we even wick lower than 40K on some FOMC volatility before we set a true direction and the dust settles Thursday and Friday? Yes, absolutely. But look at this, okay? The majority of people think that we do not hold 40K for the rest of the year. That's only a few weeks. And like I said, we're right in that timing window for the cycle low. There's too many people out there that are sure of themselves. This is a market, anything can happen. And we're still seeing people like this, okay? It speaks to the inexperience of the market. No chance we hold 40K. It's been up only for too long. No, what this tells you is you don't have any experience in the market and markets can certainly remain up only for a lot longer than they have. In fact, we've already seen this not even a couple of years ago, right? Not even a couple of years ago, we remained up only for a very, very long time. And going back to prior cycles, we've done it a lot longer than that. So don't make the mistake of thinking that you should be shorting this cycle low. Don't make the mistake of thinking that we have to significantly undercut the current low that's already there. Will we fill the CME gap at 39K? Quite possibly. Like I said, we could certainly wick that. The gap at 20K, I highly doubt it. And 12K, as you saw from the intro, is just a meme at this point. So on a balance of probabilities, we are most probably going to do what we often do for Bitcoin, which is Dalai Lama, our way out of here. And one of the reasons I have so much confidence in saying that is, like I said, not only this cycle low is in play, not only are we in the midst of putting in that mu pattern, right? Not only are we in the midst of doing this and breaking out, but a side-by-side -side comparison tells you that we're not really doing anything out of the ordinary. This current look, right, shakeout for FOMC, perhaps that 39K gap fill, followed by a bit of this, makes perfect sense, okay? That's what the structure of the market is telling us. Good luck shorting this, okay? Look at this, look at this. Do you wanna be short here? I personally do not, especially given where the cycle low is. And against the backdrop of Bitcoin continuing to do Bitcoin things. This is what Bitcoin looks like for the citizens of Turkey, Egypt, Nigeria, Argentina, Lebanon, and Pakistan. Take a look at this, take a good look at this, okay? Look. Bitcoin doing Bitcoin things. And again, under the hood, the SEC met with BlackRock yesterday for the third time to discuss their Bitcoin ETF. The SEC also met Grayscale Fidelity Franklin Templeton during the week. All the ETFs are lined up for approval. And remember, this is coming at a time where we expect this thing to be approved around January. And what have we just seen? We have just seen Google change their laws, change their rules pertaining to the advertisement of ETFs, trusts, funds, and crypto advertisement. Is this a coincidence? No. Is this fair to grayscale? No. But this is the reality of the situation. When the big boys like BlackRock and Fidelity show up, the likes of Google will change the regulations to accommodate them. Again, the market is speaking. It is up to you whether or not you choose to listen. So I'm not going to spend too much time in the charts because frankly, everything I said from the weekend's deep dive TA video still holds, okay? Everything that happens through CPI, through FOMC, and probably tomorrow as well, arguably tomorrow as well, everything that happens through there is kind of just noise, right? We often see the market go up, down, up, down, or down, up, down, up through the CPI and the FOMC print. And I don't expect this to be any different. So everything I said 
still holds. We are still looking for the dollar to roll over. We're still looking for Bitcoin to confirm a cycle low by breaking this. And we're still looking to add positions. And of course, we're looking to add to the crypto related equities. We are still pushing this oil short. We are still not trusting that gold is ready to do gold things yet. Silver is kind of confirming that and so are the miners as they all look very beaten down and rejected at resistance as well. Like I said, the stock market is hungry for new all-time highs. Does it need to have a shakeout today? More than likely. That's what usually happens during FOMC, but does it shortly thereafter want to close the week at all-time highs? I would think so. Like I said, we're half a large candle away for the Dow. So this seems like it's almost certainly going to occur. We're also continuing to see breadth widen, aren't we? Okay, small cap participation continuing to creep up something else I expect to see. And of course, once we have confirmed the yields, right, we're probably going to do this bear flag breakdown that we're currently in the middle of setting, something like this, right, and then lower down for the 10 year yield. So you know the deal by now, for the members still continuing to push all of those stocks, still looking to confirm those entries for the two we're waiting to take. And other than that, right, we'll get through FOMC, let the dust settle potentially on Thursday. And then from there, I've been saying, I expect us to be at all time highs by Friday. So what a week, what a year, long and strong, continue to push. I'm your boy Camel, I'll be back tomorrow to update you. Until then, take care from me, all the best. Cheers, bye.